Access contains several different query types, and we won't go over all of them in this course, but I do want to make you aware of some of the different queries that you can create. Before we do that, uh, when I first come into a database, I like to take a look at the existing relationships. This lets me see what tables already exist and how the fields are organized. I can also see where connections have been made in the data. In this particular database, we have a table for the employees and a table for a list of plants. This data is connected through a maintenance log table that tracks which employees have done maintenance on which plants. The database also contains several forms that give us an easy way to update the data as maintenance is completed. So now that we have an idea of the data that we're working with, let's go into Query Design View. On the ribbon, there are several query types to choose from. This course focuses on the select query, which is similar to filtering a table. This allows us to find specific information in the database. There are several other queries on there. Um, I'm going to talk about the ones that are known as action queries, and those perform a particular action on the records that meet your query specifications. Uh, the make table query creates a new table using the results of your query. The append query is going to copy the records that meet the query criteria and then add them to a specific table. The update query would change records that match your criteria. For example, you could change all of the flowers in the database listed as fuchsia uh, and change their name to be pink instead. Uh, the delete query, uh, used with caution, uh, deletes the resulting records from the original table. So make sure you're uh, absolutely sure you want to delete those records before you actually run that delete query. Um, again, we're going to focus on the select query. So let's start by just trying a couple of the trickier queries that we have here. Um, I'm going to create a query that's going to display records where the plants are white or yellow and where the height is between three and five feet. So the first thing to do is to pick the tables that I want to use and add the specific fields to the query. So I'm going to pull from the plants table and I will add the plant ID, the common name, flower color, date planted, max height feet in feet, and the purchase price. So I'm going to include just about everything here. Um, in my design grid down at the bottom, I'm going to enter criteria to ensure that the correct records are returned. First, I want either white or yellow plants. So I'm going to go under the flower color, and in the criteria row, I'm going to type white. Puts it in quotations because it's text. And then I'm going to jump down into the second line here, the OR line, and here's where I'll type yellow. So it's going to give me a flower color of white or yellow. Criteria that appears on different lines of the design grid is treated as an either or situation. Next, I'm going to deal with the plant height. I would like for the height to be greater than or equal to 3. And less than or equal to 5. Access recognizes the word AND as an operator and it capitalizes it for me. So I know that it's working as an AND. Since I want all of the plants to be this height, whether they're white or yellow, I need to add the same criteria to the OR line. So I'll just copy and paste that down there. When I read this criteria out loud, here's what I read. Show me records where the color is white and it meets my maximum height requirements. Or, switching down to the OR line now, the color is yellow and, again, meets my max height requirements. Notice that the criteria on the same line is treated like an AND, where both need to be true in order for the record to be returned. Criteria on different lines is treated like an OR, so only one of these full sets of criteria need to be true to have the record appear in the results. I'm also going to sort by the height so that the shortest plants are listed first. When I run my query, there are six plants that meet our criteria. 
Let's try one more query, and this one will be used to put all of our red plants on sale. So I'm going to go to Create and Query Design, and I'm going to start a new one. Again, I'll use the Plants table, and this time I'll include the common name field, flower color, and the purchase price. So first I'm going to add criteria so that I'm only showing red plants. I am also going to uncheck this show check box. Since all of the plants are red, it's redundant to show this in the query results. Instead, we'll name our query appropriately so that we know these are all red plants. To add the calculation for the sales price, we're going to right click in the first empty column of the query up in the field row here. I'm going to choose build and that's going to open up my expression builder where I can put a calculation. So up at the top, that's where my calculation is going to go. I also have on the left here, I have some expression elements. And if you think of the word expression, just think of it like calculation. Uh, so if I want to pull in a function, I can come into built-in functions. And they're a little bit different than the Excel functions, but they tend to work the same way. So it's only going to include the ones that make sense for access to have in here. Um, but, for example, there is uh, an if function in here. If I come down to the if, uh, it's just called a little bit different name. So it's IIF for immediate if function. And the syntax is the same. They call it a little bit different. Now our logical test is called an expression. And our value if true is called true part. But the syntax is the same. The function works the same way. So there's a lot of similarities here between Access and Excel. We're not going to use a function this particular time. We are going to instead uh, just build a calculation based on existing fields. So the first thing that I do is come up to the top and I want to name my particular calculation. I'm going to name this one sale price. So I'm going to start by typing in the new name. Then I'll put in a colon. Everything before that colon is the new name of my field everything after the colon is my actual calculation. So I am looking at a calculation of 80% of the purchase price. So I'm going to come down into the file name here and I'm going to open up the tables and get to that plants table. Now if you happen to save your query before you do this, it'll automatically pull in all of the fields in your existing query. So that can save you a little bit of time. So I want the purchase price Okay. Now it's got some extra information in here. I can delete out the expression and I can also delete out this plants table reference. Because there's only one purchase price in the whole database, it'll know which one to use. Um, if there happened to be a purchase price that was listed in multiple tables, I would definitely need this plants table reference so it went to the right table. Okay, So you can leave that in or take it out. It's going to have the same results. I'm just going to simplify this for us here and leave it as just the purchase price. My field name goes in brackets. Make sure that you get the field name exactly correct. If it's wrong, it'll give you a pop-up dialog box when you go to run the query. And that's a good indicator to you that it doesn't recognize that field name. So you might need to go back and change it. So to get 80%, I'm going to multiply that purchase price by 0.8 or 0.80. And I click OK. Here is my new calculation. There it is, purchase price times 0.8. And when I run the query, it's giving me my new sale price. I can also come in here, and if I open up the property sheet on the sale price, this will allow me to change my formatting. So if I wanted it to be currency or standard is uh, similar to number formatting in Excel, you can do that. You can set the number of decimal places from here uh, so that you actually see the formatting correctly.